everybody, welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today I have your NXT TakeOver War Game sort of reaction slash review. I'm not going to get into a deep, deep like we do our WWE main roster reviews, mainly simply because, you know, we don't have all the figures. It's not as organized. I don't have every single figure of every single person. So I'm just going to compile it, give you my short thoughts on some of these matches and my reactions to the show, man. What an amazing show. Like, holy crap. This show actually blew my ass away. Uh, you know, it's NXT. You, you always expect the best from NXT, especially War Games. War Games is definitely one of my favorite stipulation matchups, and we're definitely going to be doing a War Games pay-per-view after My Damn Nation. That's already confirmed. I think it's going to be called Warzone or, or something of that nature. I don't know the exact name of it just yet. I just want to get there, man. Like, damn. At this rate, it's going to be like two years from now, but Jesus Christ, man. If I had the freaking time and the, and the energy, if I could just get in there. MDT Live 16 is coming. I just wanted to get that out of the way, but damn, man. I want to. It made me want to do a War Games tomorrow. Just freaking, you know what I'm saying? Cancel everything. Cancel all the plans. We're just going to get in there and film a damn war games. But I definitely have a lot more ish to get before we get there. But diving into this show, man, I think the women absolutely killed it. Trash Corbin made an appearance. If you guys did not know, if you guys watched the show, Io Shirai actually put a trash can over the top of her head like so. She put a trash can over her head like this and then bailed off the top of the sail, taking out all the women. I thought that was a fantastic spot. But when she did that, um, there was a gif of it on Twitter. So I took the gif and I tweeted it out and I said, oh my god, Trash Corbin appears at War Games. So it's just, you just see the trash can on top of the on top of the cell and bailing off into the ladies. Thought that was hilarious. So Trash Corbin made an appearance, but seriously though, those women put on a clinic. I thought that was that was my favorite woman's War Games match by far. It was so hard eating, bro. The spots were absolutely freaking nuts, man. Tony Storm, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, the whole squad, both teams, Dakota. I mean, dude, they were going absolutely bonkers in that matchup, and it freaking, it got me so hyped. I was like, holy shit, how are the men going to top this? Not only was the women's War Games matchup insane, but the strap match between Cameron Grimes and Dexter Loomis, man, I'm not even a, a really a Dexter Loomis fan. I'm a really big, I'm, I'm pretty big on Grimes. I like Grimes a lot, especially on his independent days, but Dexter Loomis, he reminds me of a damn Spider-Man villain, man. I even tweeted it out talking about, he looks like the Sandman from Spider-Man 3, if you guys didn't know. You know, he's got the long, like, tight jean looking stuff on. He's got the gloves, his hair slicked back and the mustache and his facial expressions. He looks like Sandman from Spider-Man 3, all right? But regardless, he really impressed me in that matchup. I don't know what it is. It's just kind of like one of those guys I look at and I'm like, who the hell are you? Is kind of how I feel about it. But tonight, he put on a damn clinic. Cameron Grimes put on a damn clinic. Both of those dudes tore it up. I mean, dude, they, literally, there was not a bad match on the card. Everybody in every single matchup brought it. And in that matchup specifically, they were just super creative with the strap. Um, it's very hard. Usually in strap matches, you guys know it's very boring. It's very repetitive, about a bunch of strikes, a bunch of submission holds, but they were using the environment around the ring, you know, throwing themselves over barricades, hitting, you know, it was just really creative. If you guys missed this show, you definitely need to go watch it. It was very, very fun. They, these two guys beat the hell out of each other. Low key, uh, it's hard to even rank these matches one through four because of how good each match was. I think there was four matches, maybe. No, there was five. Tommaso Ciampa and, and Timothy Thatcher. I'm missing Ciampa right here for some reason, but Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher was really hard hitting. Like, they finessed the hell out of each other, man. They were both, I'm pretty sure like, Thatcher got busted open. He was bleeding. They literally, that that was a very physical match. I'd probably put that one at the bottom, but it was still very physical. It was very intriguing. Definitely probably the slower of all the matches, but that one was still hard hitting and stuff. They beat the hell out of each other. Probably gonna hear me say a million times in this video, man, because that was just crazy. I think the sleeper of the night, guys, you know, coming in, like, I've never really been a fan of Damian Priest, right? Damian Priest was a guy that I really wasn't that big on. He kind of reminded me of Trash Corbin, like watching him in the ring. I was like, yeah, I mean, he's he's more athletic. He he has a better look than Trash Corbin. Like, he's better than Trash Corbin, no doubt. But when I would look at him, he would just remind me of Trash Corbin. But after tonight, man, I must say, I think I'm a believer in Damian Priest, man. He he impressed the hell out of me. Him, Johnny Football, and Ruff went out there and put on a damn clinic, man. We had the ghost face coming out there. I thought it was retribution all over. I know they've been interfering here, but there was more goons and more ghost faces, multiple flying all over the place. Johnny Gargano does win the North American Championship. Doesn't that make his third North American Championship reign now? That kind of shocked me. I didn't see that coming. It kind of seems like Tommaso Ciampa was kind of floating through the air there. I know that's kind of off topic, but uh, it just made me think of it. Johnny Gargano winning the North American title again kind of reminded me of Ciampa and him kind of just floating around doing not much of anything significant at the moment, but we'll see about that where that goes. But Johnny Gargano is your new North American Champion, so I don't know what they were thinking. I guess the other week on NXT, 
they just got bored and were like, F it, man, let's put it on this guy that not a lot of people know about, and maybe that's what happened in that situation, but he had the sick-ass Cleveland Browns attire on. He was looking really good. I don't think I'll make a custom of it simply because that orange color would be gaudy to get onto a figure, um, unless there's an orange crotch out there that I don't know about. Nothing's coming to my brain, but Johnny Organo is the winner there, and then, uh, of course, you do have your War Games matchup, which was freaking intense. Yeah, I mean, you have Undisputed Era, who everybody loves, who came out, not in a... It, it had camo in it, but it was a mainly red, black, and silver gear, and all four members looked fantastic. They had on these sick camo shirts with red Undisputed Era logos on it. Uh, I've still yet to get my John Brown War Games Kyle O'Reilly, and I need two of them still. I'm still probably going to order those very soon. I'm just thinking... I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do for that, but I do need to order that so I can get my full Undisputed Era, and uh, until we get the Elite of Adam Cole, of course, but they came out in a sick-ass red gear. They were looking really fly. The match was super hard-hitting. Say what you want. You know, Pat McAfee. I love Pat McAfee's sports show. If you guys didn't know, Pat McAfee is a sports show host. I'm sure you guys know that by now, but Pat McAfee, uh, he he did very well in this matchup. Him, Oni, Lorcan, Birch, and Pete Dunn. They looked fantastic in this thing. Pete Dunn put on a clinic. Every man in the matchup put a, put on a clinic. Even Pat McAfee, he looked damn good. Usually when you have these celebrities, we, we, we've seen them in the ring before, but usually when you have these celebrities, man, they do not do well or they, you know, they botched something or something. I think McAfee did an excellent job. There were a couple times when he no-sold something, like when he did the splash, or not the splash, when he did the moonsault onto Adam Cole through the table, I felt like he didn't really sell it at all. He just popped back up. I feel like he should have, you know, held the sternum, held the stomach a little bit, and then when he took the superplex from Cole, he didn't really, or from Roderick Strong, he didn't really sell it either. He just kind of flat-backed and laid there instead of, like, sitting up or, you know, holding the back or doing anything like that, which isn't a huge deal, but it's just something worth noting, and also him kicking out of the god dang Panama Sunrise. What the hell was that, Brad? I did not see that coming, but Pete Dunne's black and white gear, pretty much, uh, you know, McAfee's squad, he had, like, on the black and white, and then the Undisputed Era had on the red and black, and they were both looking good. It looked like NWO versus Wolfpack NWO, man. It was pretty dope. I would love to see customs of those. If I get enough copies of Roderick, Cole, Bobby, and Kyle, I definitely have enough Kyles. I might have an extra Bobby. Um, I know I have one extra Roderick Strong, and I know I have enough of Adam Cole. I may be able to do those attires. We'll see about that and see if we can get some customs going in the red gear. Um, I need the green gear as well. I call it the Notre Dame gear. Need to get the Notre Dame gear in here, but poor Io Shirai just got the trash on there. You hate to see it. Let's let's fix it. Get in here. I don't think I think his shoulders are too wide for the trash can. I don't want to break him. So we'll just yeah, there you go. We'll make it one step better. That's what you get. But yeah, man, I was really impressed with the whole show. The whole show had me on the edge of my seat. I thought that every single matchup delivered. Again, I think Ciampa's matchup was probably on the lower tier as far as the rest of them. For some, but when, when you have all the rest of the matchups that literally go above and beyond all expectations, what are you really expecting? I think I am going to make customs of that Undisputed Era. I just got to figure it out and, you know, decals and stuff of that nature. But I don't know because I really like having extras so I can do, like, fantasy attires. Because I think the fantasy attires, I like doing the the fantasy attires more than actual gear. So I don't know. I'll, I'll see about that. You guys can let me know if you'd like to see the Undisputed Era in the red gear. Maybe I can order extras just simply for that reason. But overall, this show was absolutely great. At the end of the matchup, again, like I was saying, Pat McAfee kicks out of the Panama Sunrise. I did not see that coming one bit. But then, like, the ending sequence, man, it was crazy. Like, everybody got their ish in kicks and flips and freaking finishing moves and back and forth, back and forth. Finally, they get a hand. I can't remember if it was Birch or Owen but he got hit with a chair. He got hit by, like, every member of Undisputed Era. Kyle O'Reilly off the top rope with his knee, coming down on Lorcan or Burr. I can't remember again. I can't remember what member it was, but that was the finale there. One, two, three, and Undisputed Era wins over Team McAfee, and uh, one thing that my brother pointed out was that Bobby Fish didn't throw up the Undisputed Era hands. I could be wrong. I didn't play it back, but that's what he told me. He said, hmm, that's interesting. Bobby Fish not throwing up the, the UE there, and I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know why he would want to do that, but that's definitely something interesting moving forward. I definitely don't want to see a heel turn by Bobby Fish, but that's just something he mentioned, so maybe it could have just been, you know, a lopsided mistake. He could have been like, you know, he just may have zoned out and forgot to do it or something, or maybe he thought he did it long enough for the camera and he actually didn't or, or something like that, but I don't know. That'd be very, very interesting, but Undisputed Era gets the victory. Overall, amazing show, like tons of fun on this show, man. It, it was hard-hitting. It's NXT. I mean, what do you really want? These guys are going to bring it every single time. One last thing 
is I hate that Finn Balor was not on the show. I think he will be coming back. It also looks like they're teasing Cross returning, so we'll have to see about that, but Finn Balor did not have a matchup on this show. I was hoping he would show up. He did not show his face, which kind of sucked for me, but overall, the show was, was better than I expected. I really didn't expect much out of the show. I knew it would be good because of all the people involved, but it blew my expectations out of the water. I should have known better, but damn if I don't want to do a damn MDT War Games right now. One day we'll get there. We'll, we will get there. Uh, once we start rolling, man, we can start rolling, but Jesus. I wish I could just film like all day for like a week and we could get every show knocked out up until My Damn Nation. But we will get there. Just hang in there. It's going to be worth it. You guys know it'll already be worth it. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for my reaction slash review. Not really much of a review. It was fantastic, but we didn't get into too many details, but damn, man. If you missed this show, you gotta go back and watch it. The spots were outrageous, man, especially the women's. Like, Jesus Christ, you couldn't even catch a breath in the women's match, but I'm getting out of here, guys. That does it for my TakeOver War Games reaction slash review. Let me know what you guys thought of it down in the comment section below. For this shout-out, guys, it is gonna go to SpongeHub. He says, Trey, go buy it. My wallet. Please, no, I have a wife and kids. I thought that was clever. I thought that was funny. Shout-out to SpongeHub for that. I thought that was pretty good right there. Huge shout-out to SpongeHub for that comment, guys. If you want a shout-out in a future video, be sure to leave me a comment down below as well as liking the video and consider subscribing. That would help me out there. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.